Okay. Well, just getting myself together. You know when you're kind of almost ready, but not quite ready. <laughs> I'm nearly there. If you're new to the channel, this is completely normal. So let me just get everything in place. I've got all the questions today on my phone. So I'm going to have to just quickly um, find those. Um, those of you who, who commented on me eating that brownie on, um, what was it, the other day, check out the, the uh, review for the Colbor CL100 Lite um, that I did the other day. I spent probably half that review eating a brownie. I do hope the um, <laughs> it somehow helped with the, with, with the review. Anyway, it was a very nice brownie. And uh, oh yeah, do check out my um, Patreon channel if you're not already um, part of my Patreon. Um, it's basically just a great chance for you to buy me a cup of coffee, which I absolutely love. And so thank you to everyone who has been buying me coffee. Um, yeah, so come over there and click on that link. It's linked below. And uh, yeah, basically for the price of a cup of coffee a month, basically it helps to support the channel. And uh, I obviously do behind the scenes things and other um, stuff but, but about my book, etc, etc on there. So yeah, do come and check that out. Also, my Instagram is there as well. But let's get to the questions, I hear you say. So here we are. Oh, yeah. First question. I get, I got so many emails and Instagram messages asking me this question. And so, and it's probably why some of you are here from the thumbnail. What is the best X-Trans sensor for Fujifilm? So, this one needs coffee. The thing is, there are multiple answers to this question. So, on one level, I get all these messages saying to me, um, I sold my X-Pro1 or my X-E1 or my X-100T or, or F, whatever, um, and I really regret it. And now I wish I still had that one. Should I buy an, an older Fujifilm sensor or a newer Fujifilm sensor? You know, which one is the best? And the thing is, I never get any emails from anyone saying I sold my X100V and I really regret that. Or I sold my X-T3 and I really regret that. No one seems to regret selling newer cameras, but they always regret selling the earlier Fujifilm cameras. And that says something about the sensors. Now, so my answer to this is quite simple. And there are two sides to it. The first side is every generation of Fujifilm sensor obviously increases in quality, increases in its megapixels from 16 to 24 um, up to um, 26.1 now. And who knows what will come next? And so on one level, obviously, the Fujifilm sensors are getting better and better and better. They're getting cleaner. They're getting better commercially. Um, they are better in low light. They are, you know, technology moves on. But on the other hand, do they lose their soul? And do they end up looking too clean and too perfect? And so that in the end, we end up with this like really perfect image when actually what we loved was an imperfect image and an image that had a bit more character, had a bit more soul. And so for me, my favorite sensor is the X-Trans 1, because I feel like that carries the most filmic analog look to the photography. And so when I'm shooting now landscape photography, I only really shoot landscape photography with my X-Pro1, my X-E1, and probably my X-E2. Um, a little bit with the X-100, but again, it's all older early X-Trans sensors, um, early Fujifilm sensors. Um, in fact, this X100 doesn't even have an X-Trans sensor in it, it's pre that. Um, but anyway, I would say that my favorite Fujifilm sensor would be the X-Trans 1, followed closely by the X-Trans 2. I feel like those two sensors carry the most filmic in their style and in their look. And I prefer the colors, I prefer the output, I think their JPEGs are amazing. Um, so yeah, for me, they're the best ones. Now, technically, obviously, the newer the sensor, the better commercially. And I think if you get to kind of X-Trans 3 sensor, 
I think that's where things began to change. I think with the X-Trans 3 sensor, it looks a little bit more commercial, a little bit cleaner. Um, now, all of Fujifilm's sensors are made by Sony anyway. So Sony are incredible and they are producing these amazing sensors. Um, but I think that the X-Trans 3 and 4 sensors look a bit more like Sony sensors in terms of the um, that cleanness of the look. Um, and it's great for commercial photography. I use my X-T3s all the time commercially and they look amazing. But it's not the colours that I love, which I think I get out of the X-Trans 1 and X-Trans 2. So my favourite are the earlier X-Trans 1, X-Trans 2 sensors. Um, you have your own opinions, I'm sure. Um, my next question, what do I make of Nikon's announced ZFC? Is it competition for the X-T4 from Nick Kennedy? Thanks for that, Nick. Um, yeah, I had to look into this because I'm not a Nikon shooter, but I did some research into it. And I think it's definitely a competition for the X-T4. I don't think it's quite as beautiful as the X-T3 and X-T4, um, but it definitely looks very similar. In fact, it looks like the old Nikon FM cameras, doesn't it? The really old film cameras. And it is a gorgeous looking camera. Um, of it, it's a 20, is it 20 megapixels? Um, but anyway, I'm not a Nikon shooter, so it's hard for me to speak to that. But if you are a Nikon shooter and you don't want to leave the Nikon genre and, you know, family of cameras, then I think it's a really great way of staying in the Nikon, um, Nikon family. Uh, you're probably going to have to still buy new lenses because it's an APS-C sensor. So if you've got the full frame, you're probably going to have to go out and buy a whole new set of lenses with that. But it does look beautiful, um, but I haven't seen the output from it. Uh, uh, from someone called C. Great channel as as usual. What are your favorite Fujifilm simulations and have I tried using any of the custom ones like the um, Fuji X Weekly? Now, the Fuji X Weekly, I think my brother-in-law has tried these out. My brother-in-law, Matt. Hi, Matt, if you're watching. Um, he's just come over from Sony to Fujifilm. So I think I should do a video soon and see what it was like coming over from Sony to Fujifilm. He's bought the X100F, I think. And so I would love to go out with Matt and film and see what um, his thoughts are on his purchase. Um, and I think he's tried the Fuji X Weekly uh, film simulations, I think, because I know he's been creating his own recipes. He's a bit of a genius with this kind of thing. So I'm sure um, it'll be quite interesting getting him on the channel and seeing what, um, what he's done. Um, I my favorite Fuji, Fuji film simulation is probably classic chrome. I love that. I love that look. Um, but I often use my own presets. So I often shoot raw and use my own Lightroom presets. Which thank you for the opportunity. You can click on below if you want and get those. Um, they're my edge of the world presets, which are really designed around seascapes and landscapes. Um, they're good for other things too, but um, they're designed around you know c capturing light. Um, so yeah, have a look at those. But I will get Matt to come on and talk about those because I think he's tried the Fuji X weekly um, for his JPEGs. And in fact, he may have even created his own custom JPEGs. Uh, Nathan Churchill Music. What's your favorite camera for experience with manual focus lenses? Uh, thinking of good focus peaking, etc. I have a couple of contact Zeiss manual lenses that I love using for video on my BMPCC 6K and would like to give them a try for photography too. Thank you for that, Nathan. Um, I think my favorite, oh, <laughs> I keep knocking this over. I think my favorite camera so far for focus peaking, etc., is the X-E2. I've had some manual focus lenses on this and I just found they work really nicely with it. Um, when you switch the manual on here, the front, there we are, you, um, it switches, you get your blue, you know, on Fujifilm, you get your blue line, which tells you uh, how far you are focused. And I've just found this camera to be really great to do manual focus peaking. And they're very cheap to get these days. So this could be a good option for you if you're looking for a new camera um, to try with manual focus lenses. Um, I would recommend that one, the Fujifilm X-E2. Uh, from Cheryl Rand 22 I have an X-T2. I'd like to try street photography. In your opinion, is this camera small enough to be discreet? I'm trying to not buy an X100T as I've spent too much money on gear. I'm waiting for my Fujifilm 35mm f1.4 in the mail. Wow, that is a gorgeous lens I hear. I've got obviously the XC35, um, but I hear the 1.4 is beautiful. Um, I would say stick with your X-T2. 
I think we forget how big cameras used to be. The full frame cameras are huge. And now the RXT cameras, they're tiny really compared to other ones. So I think keep your XT2 with that 35 1.4. I think those two will sit nicely together in terms of size of lens on that. I think it will balance nicely with the XT2. Um, obviously, the X100s are perfect for street photography. I don't want to tempt you into buying more gear. <laughs> I'm the worst person to come to if you <clears throat> don't want to buy gear. But I would say, obviously these are amazing for street photography, but I would say give street photography a try first. <coughs> Sorry, I'm choking on my own coffee. Um, give street photography a try first with your um, X-T2 and your 35 and see how that goes because you don't want to get a brand new lens and then go out and buy another camera which you can't use that lens on. So I'd say keep what you've got um, because what, you're, what you've got sounds amazing. That's better. Right, okay, next one. It's the last one, David Taylor. Uh, my photography is quite varied, black and white, color, street, urban, landscapes, etc. I feel that I should start to focus on and strive to become a proficient photographer in a particular genre. Is that important to become better? Or should I continue to be a jack of all trades? I've been shooting for about five years. Interesting question. I had this chat with my wife the other day actually, because we were thinking back about the pandemic and the whole coronavirus time when all of our business just died instantly. And every photographer who's a, a full-time professional photographer can relate to this. But I was saying to my wife, I'm so grateful that I have never specified one area because if you do that, when that area goes, you've got nothing left. All your eggs were kind of left in that one basket. And so I've always been someone who's, you know, shot landscape, portraits, um, commercial photography, which is food and interiors. I've always tried to keep myself spread over a number of genres so that when one area was kind of drying up, the another area would hopefully be um, fruitful and then that would just keep going and actually I've always found that between landscapes food and interiors I've always been really busy now I used to shoot a lot of weddings but I um, stopped that a few years ago um, so I would say if you're doing it for a living which I'm not but if you were I would say keep spread because you need that spread to keep your business alive so many people now who just shoot weddings are struggling because they've been had no work for like a year and a half. So, you know, it's good to spread out if you can. If you are just a hobby photographer and you're just you know, shooting for yourself and enjoying it, you know, then fantastic. And I would say it doesn't really matter. If you want to get better and you want to increase your abilities, then yes, absolutely. Try other, other styles of photography because it will challenge you. You know, you'll suddenly have to start thinking differently about your exposure, about your um, your composition, about your lighting, about you know, your you know your, everything about photography. You know, each style lends itself to a different discipline and, and and technical aspect. So yeah, try out loads of different types. And in some ways, a good way to do that is to take seasons and say, right, for the next few weeks, I'm just going to shoot portraits, and then for a few weeks, or even for a week, I'm just going to shoot landscape. Then I'm just going to shoot that, and actually focusing on one area you know reading up about it researching watching youtube videos learning about that style and then shooting it for a while can be a really good discipline um and then then you can grow in that if you need to kind of learn about lighting you know learn about lighting get into it and then you will get better at it and each i found that each kind of season of focus on one aspect grows you as a person and as a photographer and then you grow again in a um, in that way as well. So yeah, a really good idea, but enjoy yourself, you know, if you're doing it for yourself, just enjoy it. Because what you will find in the end, you will just come back to the type of photography that you love. You always, in the end, we always come back to what we love. And so that's what will probably happen. You'll end up um, back to the one genre that you really love um, and just keep doing that and keep enjoying that. And even within that genre, you can keep specifying and you can grow in that area. If you're a landscape shooter, there are loads of different types of landscapes, urban landscapes, you know, all kinds of things within that area of landscapes, you know, so you can really grow in that. Um, yeah, so I hope that's helpful. Do check out my Patreon if you haven't already. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.
thanks a lot. Cheers.